Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Ian. I am Aaron. I'm John. And we're in the band Billy Talent, and you are watching the Kerrang! video podcast live backstage at this year's 2010 Reading Festival. Hello and welcome to the Kerrang! podcast, day one at Reading Festival. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Billy Talent. Woo! Hi Simon. I'm good, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? Good. Good. <laughs> Uh, bah, bah, super duper. <laughs> Good. Excellent. So these are your last two shows for a while. That's it. Before you uh, go off into the great unknown and uh, self-produce the uh, next album. Yes, how that's many, the plan. How many riffs have you got in the Billy Talon bag at the moment? About five. Yeah. <laughs> thousand. Just starting. Five thousand. thousand. Uh, five thousand. Five yeah, thousand. Five thousand. <coughs> cool. Yeah. Are they all keepers or some of them need uh, attention, as uh, my teacher would say? They need attention. A couple, all of them need attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you think you'll start? Are you going to have a good uh, sort of break? Before yeah, I guess we're just going to kind of take, we don't, we have no plans. So yeah. we're just going to go home and once things start cooking and we'll just kind of play by ear. Cool, you man. know, it's been a long couple of years of touring and running around the world. So it's time, it's nice to go home and recharge the batteries for a bit. Oh, I bet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you played with Green Day in a uh, Parisian stadium. Um, yeah. What was that experience like? It was Amazing. madness. You had the best view, so what was it like for you? 50,000 people. We actually went to the front of house to watch the Green Day perform, and I think my ears are still hurting from all the explosions, but it was a very special, special day. Those guys are... It's crazy to see what three kids can do from playing music in their basement to playing in front of 50,000 people. It's pretty impressive. Did you uh, hit the town with them afterwards, or was it under the next... Was it Prague, the next show you had with them? Yeah, we yeah. did Prague with them as well. We, we, we stuck around and had a drink with them and uh, nice guys still ever meet. Awesome band. Super dudes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. How's it for you? Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Was Mike Dunn one of those kind of bassists that you really looked up to when you were... Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, he's got so many like cool bass lines and all these like hooky little parts that Green Day has in their songs. Uh, and it, he's a really nice guy. I actually didn't get to talk to Mike as much because he was uh, engaged with Ben. Mike and I have a new love affair. Yeah. Started. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. I was talking with uh, with, with Billy Joel and, and uh, he was talking with Mike. So it was like a swap. Oh, the noise. I thought you said Billy Joel. No. <laughs> I was wondering what the piano man was doing. Yeah. In a... No, he showed up for a special appearance and uh, played Sing the piano man. <laughs> he did an uptown girl. So uh, while some people uh, take their time off to watch films, catch up on TV, some of us are do doing very cool charity work. Um, can you tell us a bit about what you did in Rwanda? Um, uh, I w well, I went to Kenya about three years ago with Song for Africa, and uh, this time uh, uh, Steve from Hot Out Heat and uh, 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 three other Canadian musicians went to Rwanda. I didn't go this time, but oh, uh, right. but I contributed a song uh, that I played with uh, a couple of my friends, Noble Blood. Toronto band and uh, the, the album's amazing. So you, you can pick it up on iTunes. What was your trip to? Can you like? It was uh, at the same time amazing and um, kind of depressing to see that many people living in a slum. 2.2 million people live in Kibera, which is the the second largest slum in Africa, and, and uh, it, it's you know it, it was eye opening and and it, there's so much we can do to help over there, yeah. uh, especially starting with clean water. I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what, tell us a little bit about the song that you contributed, because Ben, in a recent phone and Kerrang! said it was very cool, uh, but we hadn't a chance to hear it at the time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a sound called uh, Land of a Thousand Hills, because that's what the, the nickname for Rwanda is, because it's got so many hills. And um, it's just kind of like a I Irish waltz, almost, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it ended up happening really fast, and I just kind of wrote it on an acoustic guitar and sang it, and, and uh, my friend Ash sang the backup vocals, and, and it turned out really good. And, and it's basically about you know, being from North America and not knowing what went, over, went on over in Rwanda yeah. in the mid-90s, and then taking years to find out about it later. Yeah. And what's the URL people can uh, uh, go to? to um, if you go to songforafrica.com, um, you'll be able to find a link to the iTunes, and the album's called Rwanda uh, Rises Up. Awesome, cool. Uh, let's go back to uh, Reading. You've done this festival quite a few times now. Um, what is it about this festival that uh, you know makes people keep coming back every year? I think it's just the caliber of the bands that they have on the bill. I mean, where else can you get? You know, Billy Talent. Well, <laughs> but, you know, but you know, to have from like Arcade Fire to Blink to. You know, Guns N' Roses, to No Effects, to you know, Rise Again or Against Me. You know, what I mean, it's just like it's it's endless. Yeah. So for bang for your buck, this is definitely the, the place to be. Awesome. It's cool. Uh, which bands are you going to be checking out uh, when you uh, maybe go to Leeds when you you know got all the press out of the way? 
Definitely, uh, well, no effects again for sure. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age against me. I want to see Sick of, all, Sick of It All. I've never seen them before, so that that, that will be exciting. Which bands are you going to visit? <laughs> now the wasp, the wasp has no comment. The killer bees. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's it's just so many. Uh, the lockup stage is an amazing lineup, so yeah. uh, be over there for sure. I, I mean, no, it's the same festival, but is Leeds any different in atmosphere? The further you go north, are they more savage? Could I know the there's this, like the rivalry room? between the two, and we don't really buy into it. We just have fun wherever <laughs> we go, and uh, we're not into the uh, the the English turf wars that are Reading and Leeds. No, I, th yeah. I think kids are smiling and having fun in both places. I'd so. like to see the, uh, the makers of The Wire take on the uh, the rivalry and turn it into a gripping five-season story. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. So wh when do you think that we'll hear some new music? I know we're prodding you quite a bit to get working, but um, within a year, do you think there'll be any new stuff online? No? Yeah, I, th I think we're, you know, we've always, uh, you know, demoed stuff and, and put it up on our MySpace page and stuff like that. So you'll probably hear some something over the course of the next, you know, six months or whatever. And, and until then, we'll be working on a new album and hopefully get it get in the studio next summer. Cool. And uh, do you have any potential titles for the uh, the fourth album? Ooh. <laughs> well, it's definitely not going to be a, a number. Really? But now we, there's so much... Uh, <laughs> it really, uh, the apocalypse. Yeah, the nice. apocalypse. How about the apocalypse? <laughs> the cock, the cock and lips. The cock and lips. <laughs> That's just a working title. That's a working title. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah.